I was thinking tonight about pain. I, in my life, have had pain, but nothing tremendously serious. I think my wife, when she gave birth, was in much more serious pain than I was. Makes me think of Genesis. Supposedly, God condemned woman to uh, give childbirth in pain because of what Eve did. So your mother, my mother, your sister, my sister, your wife, my wife, had to suffer because of what Eve did. That always seemed kind of a mean. But I read that in the 1800s or so, when painkillers were, were discovered for childbirth, that religious people uh, complained that that was wrong. And I also read that King James, the king who the King James Bible is named for, burnt a woman to death for taking some sort of painkiller during childbirth because uh, he felt she was offending God. Strange view of God. I went to Catholic school in third grade for the first time. I'd been in public school before that. And the room I was in had windows facing south. And I suppose the windows had shades, but the nun didn't draw the shades. So it got hot in that room in spring and in early fall, very hot. And I remember uh, sitting basically next to the window. The window was on our left. We were facing the front of the room. And I remember waiting. There was a, a, a pillar that wasn't too wide, maybe eight inches. And I remember waiting for the sun to travel so the shade of the pillar could reach my desk and I could lean forward and as the shade traveled, I followed it all the way back as far as I could. And then I was back under the grill again. And the nun said, offer it up for the souls in purgatory. And that was an interesting construct, a bizarre concept. It's as if God is a pain banker. And someone dies, and they don't have any moral sins, but they're not going to go straight to heaven because they owe a thousand pain dollars and they go to purgatory and they earn a salary of two or three pain dollars a day or an hour or whatever and when they've earned their thousand pain dollars they can pay off their debt and go to heaven but offered up for the souls in purgatory was like a GoFundMe where um, I would have I would earn a pain dollar say by roasting in the sun but I wouldn't put it in my account but I would donate it to, I guess that was kind of a general thing, the souls in purgatory, but you could, you know, offer it up for someone you knew. And it's famously uh, Martin Luther, one of the things he had against the Catholic Church was the selling of indulgences. Indulgences were basically pain dollars or forgiveness, uh, debt forgiveness, you know, like all your sins are forgiven. Um, uh, interesting concept. And one explanation of Jesus' death, they don't say it in pain dollars like I'm saying it, but this is the gist of it. The uh, sin of Adam and Eve created a humongous debt. Debt so big that all humanity could not pay it, even if we all suffered. So the Son of God had to come and suffer. Incredible suffering. And also he's the Son of God. I guess that amplifies it. So he earned enough pain dollars to get a whole bunch of people out of purgatory and straight to heaven, or even out of hell. In hell, basically, they're the, uh, you could think of them as people that have no money and can't earn any money. They're kind of, uh, I don't know, unemployed or something. So they'll never get out of there. Uh, there was a song when I was a kid, uh, 16 tons, and there's a line in there, don't Peter sent you call, don't you call me because I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. Reminds me of that. So what is the reason for pain? I, an atheist would say, I think, perhaps, it just is. It's brute fact. You don't need a reason. That's just the way it is. Why is gravity gravity? Who knows? The theist, I think, kind of feels compelled to give an answer. If you believe in a good creator, don't you have to account for pain? 
and I've heard some accounts, but they haven't been exactly convincing. One was pain protects our protects us. If we didn't have pain, we can injure our body without knowing it. Of course, there could have, the world could have been made, I suppose, like in Eden, where we had bodies that didn't injure so easily. But even given that, a lot of pains don't seem very educational. Okay, you put your hand near a fire, it burns, you take your hand away, you've learned something. And pain can damage your body. But if you're in a fire and you get third degree burns, that pain can last for a very long time while you're in the hospital. And what's it teaching you? You didn't do anything. And I, uh, when I was lived in Boston, I worked for a while in Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. And uh, you see people, even children, little children, who are bald. And you know what that means. It means chemotherapy. And uh, it was sad. And what's a, a five-year-old kid with cancer, what's that supposed to teach the kid? You know, he didn't ask for it. So it's, it's, it's a question. Definitely is a question. A kind of a spiritual explanation I heard for pain once. This might have been in the Theologica Germanica, which is a book we spoke about some episodes ago. But uh, the idea was that well, I think it was in terms of heaven and hell. That hell was, uh, let's put it in terms of pain. The idea would be that pain is just experience of the uncreated light of the ultimate, of reality, by people who aren't prepared. People who aren't pure enough, whatever. The, the, the uncreated light is so exalted, so elevated, so intense, uh, pure isness itself existence itself and if you're somewhat purified whatever that means you can bear that radiance but if you're uh, I guess let's say committed a lot of sins you know again in the Catholic terminology or Christian terminology but whatever whatever that means it's just painful and that's a nice philosophical idea I, 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 I that might be true I mean we are creatures of the level of reality where we are in the universe. I mean, there's tables and chairs and people and buildings, but at the deepest level, there's just the, the uh, uncreated light. That's all there is at that level. That's the one. And, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a believable explanation. I don't know if it's, if it's true or if it helps much, but the idea that somehow pain is like a shining through of that intense, intense light. I don't know. I, I should say that the, getting back to the people, uh, the theist, standards, theist ideas, another explanation for pain is that it helps us grow, that uh, maybe, you know, the people around the suffering person have an opportunity to help them to, uh, you know, in whatever way. And maybe it teaches the people around them to appreciate life more and that they should be thankful for what they have and that kind of thing. And again, I, I don't really know if that satisfies. I mean, it's, it's not illogical, but I think pain still is an issue. I think that's all I have to say. I mean, I raised the question, but I certainly didn't answer it. I don't, th I haven't heard, uh, uh, I haven't answered the question. And unfortunately, there's no answer for me to envy to say that's a really good explanation. I wish I'd thought of it. It seems like other explanations I've heard are eh, possible, but to, to, for me, they just don't do it. I think pain for me is still a question. Why does it exist? Is it wrong? Does it have a purpose? Is it wrong to ask if it has a purpose? You know, do you, maybe the universe just is. I don't know, but that's been my reflection for tonight. Thank you. I'm reflecting on what I just said. It occurs to me that. Theology matters, and truth matters. The story in Genesis about why women have to bear children in pain. There's also a story about where the rainbow came from. And I guess it's Genesis 2, where languages came from. You can imagine, well, maybe whoever wrote that really believed it. Or maybe they were just trying to construct a believable tale for the populace. 
But either way, those ideas have mattered. They've many women perhaps suffered a, a lot of pain who could have taken painkillers but weren't allowed. When you think of ideologies, when I was uh, growing up in the 60s, Cuban Missile Crisis, the United States and uh, the Soviet Union almost went, almost had a nuclear war. And uh, the idea behind communism was written by a guy named Marx, who was a philosopher. And then, I, I don't know much about it, but, but Lenin also wrote some stuff, and they call it Marxist-Leninist or something. But those were just ideas. I mean, yeah, there was politics involved and there were guns involved, but there was motivated by ideas. I believe in the Middle Ages, usury was considered a sin. Usury is lending money for interest, which is the basis of a capitalist economy. If it was still considered, uh, if it was forbidden, we would have a society very, very different than the one we have in the, in, well, where I live in the United States and in much of the world, I think. So ideas matter and trying to get at the truth matters and being able to say, I don't know, when you don't know matters and not just making something up. So I guess that is it for tonight. Thank you.